a king in the north, forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. It's so strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes, and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrving. For the trials, like when we first met, remember? There he is. There he is. Dillian, there he is. Finally. You found him. What's wrong? What happened? Can you hear me? Did you let him Just wait there. I'll find you. Him, get him back. He was just there. How could you lose him? How could she lose How him? How could she find him? I'll find him. disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, 
and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. The voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. Listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. Keep going. Send him follow the voice. You're nearly there. Dillian's voice. It's him. He's going to save you. Find the voice. Find him. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through you. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy. The chief no. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said it could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. There's more. You're tired, but you have to keep going. There's still more. It's not going to be easy. Can you do another one? It's too much. Have you got the energy? She hasn't got the energy.
I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older, and where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? Towards it. He's in the house. Find He's going in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. The air is in Keep going. Do you find it? It's just a test. It's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me. The stench of rot. She can almost taste it. Do you smell it? Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. Before he disappears, you have to get in. speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. But that is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, and beware, because there will be death in that house. That's it. You did it. She did it. It's not done yet. Just a small piece of the puzzle. You found a way to climb the tower. The ladder. What now? You can see it. A line to the tree. Come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Find are you him. in there? You have to find him. Come out and focus. Delia! Run! 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 
coming. Move away. You're lost again. Sanu! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just... people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What if this has nothing to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be wrong. <laughs> what if this is the end? It's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. You've been fooled before, you could be fooled again. You don't know. It's just their game for you. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs> I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur. The second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Dillian, is it? Don't forget. 
roots. You can feel it. You need the roots to fight Dillian. You need Dillian. He's waiting for you. He always said he would wait. He, he's close. He's about you. He's close. He loves you. Dillian, there he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go through me. Before he disappears. Dillian, where is he? Where has he gone? We're in the wrong world. He's not here. She's in the wrong world. He's not in this world. He's in the other one. He's in the other one. He's in the dark world. The dark world. The dark world. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the glow. And Senno explored new paths into the unknown. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him. Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. He cared in a way that nobody else did. He was the only one that really loved her. He did love her. Believed in you. Do you know? Was it worth it? You're still alive, and Dillian's dead. He doesn't deserve to be dead. How does that make you feel? You have no
He's in the dark world. He's gone to the dark world. You're in the wrong world. He's in the other world. The dark world. Without you. You had that love. You squashed it. It's The curse cannot be undone. Listen to your father when you had the chance. Why didn't you listen to him? This love has tortured you and it tortures him. There he is. Where are you taking him? He's up there. How do you get up? There's a way. There is a way up there. She can do this. You're nearly there. She finds the darkness swallowing you both. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe, and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taken for him. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Huth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hood is slain. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's Years ship. had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. Do you remember the way he and Dillian. Her future. Two realities tearing at her soul. Thank you. 
Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Your curse has claimed Dillian. Poor Dillian. He didn't know he was kind. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Do you remember the way he looked? Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. Do you remember what it was to touch him? Druids, like our father, Zinbal. 
I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. And he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, and to see the world through his eyes. And slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? You give up the beautiful world. You, and only you, can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my eyes. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking you from the inside. You're and disappearing it's... one memory at a time. Every time you remember, it disappears. They're going to take everything. They're not yours anymore. They're going to take everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. They want your body. They want your soul. They want your mind. And they're going Norton to take Norton say that their all-father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness, there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua.
be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I can't go on. Lillian? Find a way. I'm not leaving you here. I think I'm somewhere else now. The breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? Good. I've reached the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shenwa. My father. He taught me the hardest battles to fought in the mind. Not the sword. The no coward. He proved that to me in the warrior tribe. This is just another battle. You can beat him. This isn't for that. You don't have to help him. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. We need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best. Not following me. Leave it behind and keep moving forward.
Death. The darkness is testing you. You are in control. As well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. She could spend hours, days even, trapped within herself. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere, with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, Someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Forged, you will have Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillion was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. 